Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Okay, I'm looking for my share button and um, it's not there. I don't understand that. Oh, Facebook, what are you doing to me? But thank you to all of you that are with me today. Um, I see that a number of you have already shared um, this uh, Facebook Live, so I appreciate it very much. That's a way for us just to um, bring the creative process and the fun to more people. So why not share all that, right? Um, I'm just adding these couple of leaves to one of the cards we're going to be making. Um, Oh, and there's one other thing I have to grab, and then we're gonna get started right away. Okay, I hope you're all ready. Hi, Janelle, Leah, Fran, Naomi. Who else is here? Joan Horner, Sharon. Anna, hello. Hi, Melinda. Okay, so today we are talking about a new, um, I'll say a new category of product or a new type of product. And that is, put my samples there, and that is a, um, what we're calling a hybrid embossing folder. And um, right now we just have one of those and that is the Bloom Hybrid Embossing Folder. And basically in that bundle that contains, <clears throat> excuse me, contains the um, Bloom Embossing Folder, you're actually going to get two things that um, come together. And that is the Hybrid Embossing Folder with the um, Bloom dies. They go together, and that's what makes this type of hybrid embossing folder unique, is that it will allow you to both emboss and cut an image at the same time, um, instead of doing as those as two separate um, steps. Um, certainly, you can use the embossing folder by itself, and you can use the die by that coordinates with it by itself. But the two together is what makes it unique. And not every embossing folder and die set will do this. So you want to look for um, where it says right up here, Bloom Hybrid Embossing Folder. And um, I think what we'll do is, that's really the only one. I should tell you where that is in the catalog. It is, and the stamp set that coordinates with it is called Art in Bloom. Let me just point you to the right direction in your catalog. Art in Bloom, page 116. And you can buy, um, hold on, page 116. You can buy that stamp set separate. It is a two-step um, set meaning that you stamp the outline of the flower first, and then you'll fill in the color with the second st stamping set. Um, when you purchase the whole bundle, you're actually getting 10% off all these three products. So as a bundle, these three sell for $53. Um, which is a good value. But let me flip my camera around and show you what it does. Because I think um, to actually talk about it and to see it in the works um, is a big difference. And I think you can appreciate it more um, with a demonstration. Before that, I just want to put in a plug for August 3rd. August 3rd, we will launch our holiday mini catalog. We will also launch 
a second celebration. Celebration, the summer celebration. This is the first time Stampin' Up! has done um, a second celebration in the same year. And as you know, celebration is always our biggest promotion of the year. We have um, incentives for people who shop, who host a party, and I've already got my first party uh, virtual Facebook party scheduled for August. And um, also if you join, there are, um, there's also an incentive for that. But that runs August 3rd through September 30th. So those things are coming. If you're already a customer of mine and you have purchased from me in 2021 or in fall of 2020, you will be receiving a catalog in the mail. <clears throat> If you have not made a purchase in, from me in that time, um, just let me know and I can get a catalog off to you as well. And certainly if you are looking for a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, um, I would love to earn your business and um, would be happy to send you a complimentary catalog. You just need to message me um, your catalog request with your mailing address, and I will take care of that. So that is coming August 3rd. And since we're talking about hybrid embossing folders today, I wanted to point out to you a bundle that is in the holiday catalog, and it's called the Merriest Moments Bundle. There's some great sentiments in here. It has a very traditional feel with the holly and the poinsettias, but it too has a unique hybrid embossing folder. So you can match up this embossing folder with this large frame die, and you will be able to cut and emboss at the very same time. And if we have, um, I haven't made any samples with this hybrid embossing folder, <clears throat> excuse me, but if we have time at the end, um, we'll just go ahead and um, emboss and cut one of these to try it out. So let me flip my camera around now and we'll get started um, with today's project. I will be giving some cards away um, from this Facebook Live, so be sure to comment throughout as well as to share this video. So just give me a moment to flip my camera. Alrighty, we're set. I've got some shadows going here today. What's that all about, huh? Okay, um, so what we're using today, as I said, is the Bloom Hybrid Embossing Folder. And we're using this large die as well as the stamp set Art in Bloom. First of all, I want to show you what this can do. So here's an example, very simple card, white on white. And um, this layer is just embossed with that beautiful Bloom hybrid embossing folder. It's actually, you can see it this way, how it matches up. But I think it's beautiful just like that, just for a pretty simple note card. Simple and elegant, quick, easy, um, emboss a layer, stick it on your card base, and write your note. I also embossed the flap of the envelope. Just by putting the flap in the embossing folder and running it through our embossing machine. So that's a fun way to add, um, to dress up your envelope, I'll say. Now here is basically the same card, but this time you can see I actually cut out the flowers. And I did that in one quick and easy step. I laid my embossing folder flat. 
I fit this die flat side down um, into the negative space around the flowers. You see that space around the flowers? This will fit right in there. And if you, um, and it stays pretty much in place, but if you feel more secure, um, add a, just a little piece of washi tape on each side to hold it in place. And then I laid my cardstock over it, closed it, ran it through the big shot. And that's how I got this. So that outer part, I adhered down flat. And then the flowers, I just, they're in the same place that they were. I just popped them up on dimensionals. So um, here's two simple cards, one using just the embossing folder and one using that embossing folder with the die. And you can see just, again, simple um, cards. But I wanted to do this to show you the difference between the two. Let me set these aside. And then I made this. So let me show you how I embossed and then colored this embossed piece to make a pretty card. And then we're going to make another card and we're going to stamp and emboss. We're going to, yes, let me think about this. Stamp emboss and cut all at once. So all three steps, okay? Now to make this, you're just going to start with a piece of five and a quarter by four inch white or a neutral, it really could be any color you want. Um, it would be pretty with vanilla. Does everybody know what the line is for when you see a straight line on your embossing folder? It's right along the left and right side of our Stampin' Up! logo. What that is, is something to help you line up your cardstock straight. Okay, this, um, this type, this embossing folder in particular, it doesn't make a huge difference if it's not perfectly straight, but we have some where you definitely want to make sure your paper is straight when you put it in the embossing folder. Um, certain directions, if it's got stripes, straight lines, that kind of thing. So that is what that line is for in case you always wondered. It's not part of the Stampin' Up! logo. It's an extra, um, an extra little thing to help us. So whenever you're using <clears throat> the hybrid embossing folders, and again, we have this one and that one that's coming in the holiday catalog. Think of it as a 3D embossing folder. So we have our regular embossing folders and our directions on the um, stamp and cut and emboss machine platform show us what to use. With 3D embossing folders, we use a different sandwich. We use one, which is this big fat platform, and we use number four. So with the hybrid, you're going to use the same sandwich as the 3D embossing folders. So I'm gonna put that in, roll it through. And now I have this. So let's go ahead and add some color to this. I'm going to use my sponge daubers. Who has sponge daubers? If you don't have sponge daubers, you are missing out. <laughs> this is one of the easiest ways to add color to um, many of your um, stamping and paper crafting projects. So I'm using Daffodil Delight and I'm just tapping that color into the center of each of these flowers. 
and it's okay, you know, if you're using the um, sponge daubers, it's okay if the ink goes beyond that. There's not a problem with that at all. And then I'm going to use Garden Green for the leaves. And it is a good idea to have some um, scrap paper around and because sometimes the color might appear darker than you want it. And you can test, do you want to dab it on? Do you want to rub it on? That sort of thing. But I usually start by kind of swirling it on my scrap paper first. So that when I start working on my actual cardstock piece, my embossed piece, I don't get like a heavy um, circle shape when I first put uh, the sponge dauber to the cardstock. And as you can see, I should have this underneath. As you can see, as I'm working, the leaves are getting lighter. Here's what I started with, and you can see they're getting lighter. That's because I'm using up the ink that's on my sponge dauber. If you want to make them darker, just go back over them a second time. You might even need to add more ink to your sponge dauber. Now, for the long leaves, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to do all the leaves that have, have that pattern in them, the, where you can really see those small loopy veins of the leaves. I think I got most of them. Now I'm going to do these long leaves and I'm going to just change the way I hold my dauber. Instead of holding it straight up and down, I'm gonna use it at an angle because these narrow leaves are narrower than the head of my sponge dauber. So I'm actually just using an edge of the sponge dauber to color these skinny leaves. And again, as you do this, you'll be using up the ink that's on your sponge dauber. So you not, might need to add more ink. The variations in color are okay, like if you get some lighter and some darker. After all, that is the way nature and living things are. Has anybody gotten the Art and Bloom set yet? Um, I had not gotten it, and honestly, I didn't really even pay attention to the fact that it was a different kind of embossing folder and different kind of bundle until our CEO, Sarah Douglas, demonstrated it. And if you aren't already aware, um, Sarah Douglas does nearly every Tuesday um, on a Facebook Live, and typically she is doing some kind of project. And she did demonstrate this. And the way to find her, it's Tuesday afternoons, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, which is 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I live. Um, and she uh, goes live on Facebook, and you look up Sarah Douglas, S-A-R-A-D-O-U-G-L-A-S-S, -S -S, comma, CEO Stampin' Up. And that's how you find her. But um, I love catching her when I can. And sometimes I'll even go back to her um, page and just look up her videos if I've missed some. Now, this is pretty much the same thing. I decided on the first one, I wanted to add some blue just to have a little background. I actually think I like it better without the blue. So it's just a matter of personal preference. And then I wanted to dress up this first one a little bit more. So can you see this? I have um, some, um, oh, what's the word? Wink of Stella. 
Wink of Stella. Um, oh, Janelle, you recently got this bundle. Wonderful. So I'm glad you're here for this demonstration. Um, it really is easy to use. It just helps, though, if you can see it the first time. But can you see how I've added Wink of Stella? I'm going to do the same thing on my white flowers. Kind of look like daisies, don't they? I'm going to add, add it to the center first. And before I go on and just add a little Wink of Stella to the white petals, I'm just going to go off on scrap paper because your brush tip of the Wink of Stella can actually pick up some of the ink. And I don't, it's really not a big deal if it does with the yellow, but it's just a good habit to be aware of that if you're um, using it on areas where you're going over some of that watercolor ink. Remember our ink pads and Stampin' Right markers are water-based, so it can pick up that ink. Now, if you're going over color that you put on with Stampin' Blends, it's really not going to pick up that ink because Stampin' Blends are alcohol-based, and they dry permanently, and they dry very quickly. Adding a little Wink of Stella just gives it some shimmer, very subtle shimmer but it also can add some dimension. And on, on this one, I'm not gonna add any blue in the background. Okay, one thing I just noticed is there are a couple places where just you see some very small, um, they almost look like wrinkles in the paper. To avoid that, like this, I don't, it just kind of blends in. I don't think the person receiving this card is even going to notice that. But if you notice that, the way to avoid those wrinkles or those cracks in your paper when they're going through the embossing folder is to loosen up the fibers of the embossing or of the uh, cardstock. And I'll show you what I mean by that. There's a few ways you can do it. Um, I don't think you can see the edge of my table but you could just roll it over the edge of your table. It makes sort of a curve. Um, some people spritz it with water. You can do that, but I would say make sure the paper is somewhat dry then. Don't, you don't wanna soak it. Um, and the other way is just to use a bone folder and kind of do this to it. You see how it's curling a little bit? It's curling because you're breaking up some of those fibers in the paper and so that is a way to avoid some of those small cracks or wrinkles i don't really worry about that when it's so small but if i were doing something and it was a large wrinkle or a large crack i would go ahead and take a few seconds to loosen up those fibers okay so just one of those um tips you kind of learn along the way. So I'm going to add this now to a Granny Apple Green card base. So I, on my card front, on the embossed layer, I use Daffodil Delight and Granny Apple Green. And then I just add or added a little Wink of Stella. So tell me, do you like it with and I definitely like the color background on this particular card a little bit better than I like it on the white background. But tell me, do you like it with the um, little bit of blue in the background or do you like it um, without the blue? And that blue is balmy blue ink. And I just added it with a sponge dauber and you can even see that it's gotten on the edges of some of my leaves and flowers but it still looks beautiful it still looks okay so you don't have to worry about doing it perfectly you don't have to worry about that um, thought of coloring in the lines okay okay so Naomi likes the colored card base and she likes it without the blue. I think I do too. I think it's just a little bit sharper, 
but I know there are people out there that are going to say they like it with the blue. So, oh, and there we go. Joan and, um, who else did I see? Mary Lou says without the blue. Joan says with the blue. Leah says with the blue. So really, this is a good example of experiment with the products you have and um, do what feels good to you. Do what you like. Um, but it's fun to just play around making those small changes. I made two small changes. I went from a white card base to a granny apple green card base. And I went from adding some blue background, balmy blue ink for a background, to no background. And I got two very different cards. I like them both. It's just a matter of preference which each of us likes better. Okay. Now, um, before I show, make the next card with you, I want to show you this. Um, and I love the way this turned out. Does any Has anybody caught the difference? I think you can see this pretty well here. Does anybody know the difference of what I did here as to, opposed to my, let me grab my first card, as opposed to the first card with the embossing folder? Can anybody see the difference between what's in my left hand and what's in my right hand? Yes, Melinda, I debossed. Or as Cindy says, the embossing is inside out. I use the back side to make this card. All I did was flip it over. It's reversed. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the way it turned out. Now, I have to be honest and tell you, I didn't think to do it this way. What happened was I was embossing. I wanted some embossed envelopes, embossed flaps on my envelopes for the first two cards I made. And I actually embossed it the wrong way. And I went to throw it out or cut it off, use a scrap paper, whatever. And I thought, no, wait a second. It's still pretty. So that's how I got the idea. Make a card with it debossed. And I really have to say, I love it. And look how simple this is. Just a few layers and a debossed piece of cardstock, add a little ribbon, and boom. I can use this for anything. Add any sentiment you want. Um, I added a little bit of ribbon inside. You can put your sentiment in there if you want. But either way, it's beautiful, isn't it? But I just had to show you that. But I had to be honest, too, and tell you it was actually a mistake, which actually became um, an opportunity to create something different. Um, Katie says she would like the measurements. How about if I give them to you really quick? But I will include those. Um, let me see. Where's my little handy thing here? But I can include those when I actually do the um blog post and a Facebook post with just this card. But it's a four and a quarter by 11 inch card base, score it five and a half. And then you're gonna cut two pieces of white that measured three and seven eighths inch by one and five, or five and one eighth, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And I say two because I made the inside piece the same size. The debossed piece of white cardstock is four and three quarters by three and a half. And then that um, layer of the Just Jade is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Okay, but like I said, I'll do... Um, Actually, maybe I should make this my next um, free Friday download. I think that's what I'll do. So I'll get it in print one way or another. So here's the next card that I want to show you how to make. What I'm going, Janelle, I love that thought. There are no mistakes in card making, right? There's no crying in baseball and there's no mistakes in card making. I love it. Okay. 
So let me show you um, how I made these flowers. Because what I did was I stamped first and then I cut and emboss them at the same time. And we'll make um, a card. It's not gonna be exactly the same, but it'll be very similar to this one. I just noticed this isn't quite straight. Let me see if I can pull that up. I might have to, I don't know if you noticed that or not. Maybe it's just the angle I was looking at it. Okay, so here's my pieces, but I'm going to start by stamping on a piece of white cardstock. And I'm going to be using Poppy Parade for this. And remember I said that this stamp set is two step stamping. So you stamp the outline and then you stamp the solid color inside for both the flowers and the leaves. So I'm going to do that. This is Poppy Parade I'm using. I'm not sure if I said that. Oh, you know what, shoot. I should take these off and show you because these three flowers are on one stamp. These three are actually separate. So I wanna show you how I was able to line them up on one clear block. So what I did was I took each of these, the flat side is up, the stamping surface is going towards my cardstock, and I'm just laying it over the top of the outline flowers. Oh, that might not be the right one. What I will tell you also is this is one of those stamp sets, two-step stamp sets, that um, the inside does not line up perfectly, and it's intended to be that way. So don't get all worried that, oh, it's not lining up perfectly. No, it's going to be close, but it's not going to be perfect. And again, that's the way the stamp set was designed. And then once I have those in place, let me move this one a slight bit. Then I just lay my clear block on top of it and it picks those right up. Okay, it's an easier way to do it and less time consuming than doing the three separately. So now I'm just looking over the top and I'm getting pretty close to my cardstock. And when I feel like I've got things lined up pretty well, I just press it all the way down. And there you have it. Close this up. So now I'm ready to um, emboss these and cut them. But I'm going to do that at the same time. I'm going to do both step, steps at the same time. The first thing I'm going to do is lay my die down. You know, I'm going to turn it this way because when I close it, my fold will be at the top and I want you always, 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 once you're embossing folders, to go through the machine fold first. If not, it can break that fold. And even if you have those together, but the fold is not in place, it, they won't work. Um, and Are we okay? Yep, I think we're okay. Um, if you feel like you want a little extra security, just use some washi tape to hold it in place. And keep your washi tape outside of the cutting lines, okay? Um, just to be sure you get a nice, good cut on your cardstock. I like to keep my washi tape on the outside of the cutting lines. There's not a lot of room, but there's enough to make it work. Then I'm going to 
place my cardstock here. Now you're going to say, well, Mary, how do you line it up correctly? You flip it over. You've got that um, die held in place with your washi tape. So now you can just move this cardstock around until you get it in place. And what you're really looking for, <clears throat> it kind of fits into um, the lines of the embossing folder, but I find it a little bit easier to actually look at the shape of the dies because that's what's cutting. And once you feel like you've got it in place, you just hold it there and close. Now again, if you want some extra assurance, you can add some washi tape to either end, but just make sure that you're holding your cardstock in place when you do that. So now it's ready to go. I have to move this out of the way. Remember, when we're working with our hybrid embossing folders, think of it um, as using the same sandwich as the 3D embossing folders. So I've got everything in place. I've got my number four platform. I'm using one and four. You might even save this. Remember I made that, um, that second card I made? I used the background. So you might do something with this, may or may not, but just a thought. And then I've got my three stamped flowers beautifully embossed and cut out perfectly. So now I'm ready to finish up my card. Now on this card, instead of making a vertical card, oops, I don't know why I have two card bases there. Instead of making a vertical card this time, no, that's not what I was gonna say. Is that what I was gonna say? No, that's not what I was thinking of. Um, I made the center a little bit smaller. I decided I wanted less of the polka dot and more of the white around it, or more of the balmy blue around the white. And let me double check my measurements. I think four and three quarters. Okay, so the white is four and three quarters by three and a half. And then the designer series paper, which is from the Yora Peach Suite, that measures three and three eighths by four and five eighths. Sometimes I like those small borders and go down by eighths or up by eighths rather than quarter inches. And I'm going to put this on the center of my card base. Again, just one simple difference here. I just changed the size of the layers. That's it. And now I'm ready to add my flowers. When I'm doing flowers and leaves, I typically add the flowers first. Um, usually I am, not always, but usually I am popping them up on dimensionals. And then I just tuck in the leaves behind them. For me, that seems to work well. Get my flowers in place, the bigger pieces in place first, and then the smaller pieces, the leaves, I tuck in afterwards. And let's see. You know, we could make this a vertical card. Why not? And for the leaves, I'm just um, going to add these with some mini glue dots. 
And like I said, I'm just going to tuck them underneath those flowers I have popped up. Just wherever you think they should go. I'm wondering if I want this third one right there. Oops, it's backwards. Do I want it up here? Like how I put them in and then pull them out. <laughs> but really, look, it would work like this as well. So, but I'll go a vertical one this time. I'm going to um, stamp a sentiment, dear friend, with balmy blue. And I'm going to there's a reason I stamped towards the left side. I'm going to cut this is a little too long. I'm going to cut this off. And then I'm going to use my banners pick a punch. wasn't in there straight at all. Come on, Mary. You know what? I think I've lost. It's too short. So instead, I'm going to fix it this way with my snips. You know what? A better way to do that, let me show you. What I should have really done, if knowing this was too long, which I did, I knew it was going to be longer than I needed, this is what I really should have done. So let's, let's do a repeat, and I'll show you something that makes better sense. If you have a piece that's too long, cut your banner end first. Then you can stamp your sentiment. And then just snip the other end. Easier, right? Live and learn. Hmm. Okay. And I, now I'm deciding where I want this. Oh, I kind of like it going right across the flowers like that. Or do I want it up here? Oh, no. I think I'm going to go right across that flower. Something a little different, kind of like when you um, get flowers. I don't know about you. I don't get flowers sent to me very often, but when I do, it's always exciting, isn't it? But you notice that the card is never like standing on top of the bouquet or hanging from the bottom of it. Um, it's always tucked right inside the flower bouquet as if it's part of the bouquet. So that's what I'm thinking here. And then I think we could use a little bumblebee. Does anybody have these? I used them for, on one of my classes to go and I had a few left and I thought, oh, this is a, um, a fun card to use them on. They are not adhesive, so... I should say they don't have adhesive on the back. So I just press it down on top of a mini glue dot and stick it right on my card, just like that. All right, what are your thoughts? Kathy Crumlish is asking, have you ever used two colors, lighter and darker, when stamping the flowers? Absolutely. And um, let me grab a piece of cardstock or two, and I'll show you. 
Okay, so here's one thing you can do. I'm gonna grab my scrap paper again for this. You can see. <laughs> so in that case, if I wanted those flowers lighter, what I typically do is stamp the outline of the flowers or you know whatever image you're stamping. And then you can use the same color ink, stamp off onto scrap paper, and then stamp onto your cardstock, onto the outline of the flowers, and you get something totally different. Okay, something totally different. Which I think this is, I really think this is just as pretty. I honestly do. I kind of like um, to see more of the variations in light and dark and tones and stuff. Um, the other thing you can do is, and I typically when I'm doing this, I kind of play around with colors first, but since I have the Poppy Parade out, I'm just going to use this. So here's Poppy Parade. And then I look at my inks, all my colors. And I think, hmm, what would go in that with the Poppy Parade? I might even refer to um, my color swatches. That says So Saffron. I think that would be a neat choice. Petal Pink would look neat in there. But I had my eye on the Mango Melody. So I'm going to try that. Whoops. Need to use my chamois. You can't see it, but it's to the right of the screen. So I'm using my chamois to clean that off. And I'm just going to ink this up. Oops, picked it right up, didn't it? I'm gonna try, I don't have too much ink on there. And now I'll stamp Mango Melody in there. So there's another option. So yes, um, Kathy, yes, that's a very good question. Um, and again, in stamping, there's no right or wrong answer. And a lot of times, it's just a matter of experimentation. I might find, like, I love these cards, um, but I also really like this. Some people might be like, oh, I want even more color. So I want that orange in there, that Mango Melody color with the Poppy Parade. Um, but I often do that, and really my go-to way of adding other, how should I say, um, changing the tone of something is by doing the stamping off. Stamping on scrap paper first, and then stamp on. With the second step having the flowers individual could you stamp two different colors oh absolutely absolutely you can do the same thing absolutely and you know if you're wanting to um you know you can certainly cut away or use the the dye whatever um to cut these apart and these already are separate three separate stamps this is one I would not recommend. Sometimes people will cut stamps apart. I would not recommend that at all because if you plan to do the cutting or, or the uh, embossing and the die cutting at the same time with the hybrid embossing folder, you're going to want these to be one. However, if you want to, um, let me get another piece. What you could do is, let's clean this off. And say, for example, you really only want this flower. What you could do then is, I'll just go back to the same colors. What you could do then is, um, and it, you can do this with washi tape, you can do it with sticky notes. Just cover up those other two flowers, whichever 
you know, I'm just using scrap paper because it's handy. I've done it with washi tape, depending on how much um, of the stamp I'm covering up. Um, and uh, what did I say? Washi tape, scrap paper, oh, and post-it notes, sticky notes. And you can just do that. Now, I didn't super clean the stamp, but you can see now I'm just stamping one flower and I could pull this off because these insides are three separate ones. Tammy Albright is asking, am I lo located in Westerville, Ohio? I sure am. Are you in Westerville or the Columbus area? I've lined it up. I'm going there. Um, let's try a different color. What was the one I mentioned earlier? Oh, um, hmm. I wonder how cool so coral would be. Oh, let's see, right? <laughs> oh, I like that too. That's Calypso coral filled in with the same poppy parade outline. So look at that. We have all these different samples. Poppy parade, poppy parade stamped off, poppy parade outline with Calypso coral stamped. This is poppy parade and poppy parade. And we've got poppy parade and um, mango melody. So um, who, who asked that question? I can't even remember. Leah asked the second part of the question. Kathy Crumlish asked that question, and then Leah followed up with another good question. Um, and thank you for that, because if you were wondering it, somebody else was probably wondering the same thing. Um, and one thing I love to do is just sit here and teach and share and even experiment with you. I love these. Um, what I'd like to do is, um, Kathy Crumlish, I would like to send you, um, how about these two, Kathy? I'll send you these two, and um, would you make something with them? And Leah, I'll do the same for you, except I'm going to do separate flowers with different colors, which would make a really cute, um, what do I want to say, like a bouquet or arrangement of flowers. And for both of you, I will um, die cut and emboss those as well with my lovely Bloom hybrid embossing folder and the Bloom die, okay? Because I love to see, I mean, those were great questions and I love to sit here and experiment and try different things with you. Um, so thank you for asking those questions. But now I'm going to send um, Kathy and Leah, each of you, some of these and just ask you to make something, take a picture of it, and share it here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave. Um, and I will be giving away a card today. You know what I was going to do? I was going to add some Oink of Stella right here. Just a little, a little tad, even less than on my other card. Just for a little shimmer. Um, one thing, I don't know if you could, how well you could see this. I used Poppy Parade on both the outline and the filler stamp on both of these. But on this one, I added some, um, with a marker, I added some uh, Daffodil Delight to the center and the petals on this one. So that's another way to add some color variation going on top with another color. Alrighty. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to give this card away and I'm going to um, send some sample flowers to Leah and Kathy Crumlish to 
make something beautiful with and they'll share it with all of us. So thank you, ladies. Um, yes, the poppy parade and the balmy blue really go together. And I wouldn't have thought that, but look what I did. I went to my um, color coach and I looked up balmy blue because I wanted to use this print I knew and it gave me some different choices and I went with the poppy parade. All right, any questions? Any questions? Um, somebody asked me about living in Westerville, so I wanted to follow up. Oh, Tammy Albright, you are in Westerville and you're looking for a consultant. Uh, oh, wonderful. Um, I'm so happy to know that. And um, I look forward to getting your message and we'll um, touch base and I'll do my best to help you out as best I can. All right, everybody, happy Friday, have a great weekend, and I will see you Monday at 11 a.m. right here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe.